Wow, look behind you. I like this behind you. I'll let you too. You're in the picture too. Oh, wow, look at this. <gasps> Hello, Jessica. Hello, Anthony. Please can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background. Hi, hi. Um, my name is Jessica Sula. I'm from Wales originally, I'm from Swansea. Well, I'm from Lacha, but um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I've just been, I've been, I've been out there working. There's a car alarm going. There that is. is so distracting. <laughs> right um, no worries. Constant. Uh, yeah. I've been. I started on a show called Skins, and I've just been doing it ever since. And I'm Anthony de Blasi. I've uh, I started my career working with Ty Barker, producing with him for quite a few years. Uh, my first film was a film called Dread that was based on one of his short stories. So I've kind of been plugging away in the genre ever since, trying to make scarier movies with each I'm one. Scary. <laughs> I'm scary. Can you sum up this film in a few words? Oh, sorry. sum up the film in a few words? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, okay. I, I like to say it, it's bonkers, but in the best mm -hmm. way. Bloody and, uh, what's another good word? Um, terrifying. Terrifying. I was say terrifying would be. It, <laughs> oh. it's, a, it's a horror film that's meant to please horror audiences, for sure. Malum is an expert in engineering of last shift. It succeeds in creating a truly horror atmosphere with some striking scene and a perfectly mastered cast. We feel in this film a kind of homage to Clive Barker. Anthony, please can you tell us which are your influences to create this movie? Well, you know, it, it was funny. I think for the first movie, for last shift, I was definitely influenced by a bit of Carpenter with the Southern Precinct 13. And I consumed a lot of documentaries on the Manson family. And I think when you watch the first movie, there's definitely a bit of a Nightmare on Elm Street homage in that. In this movie, you know, I creating more of a mystery. I think um, a movie I like very much is uh, Derrickson Sinister with Ethan Hawke. Oh, yeah. I think like this film, and, and, and I think my, my years with Clive, you know, definitely influenced this movie a lot. I, and I, I, I learned so much of, from him in the time I was with him that it's definitely me now in, in my, <clears throat> now in my years where I am in my career, I think like that has kind of settled on me in a more meaningful way with this movie. Jessica, you are popular for the series Skins yeah. and the great movie Split. What attracted you to the script of this film and how did you prepare your character? Um, well, I, at first I was kind of, I was nervous to take it because I didn't, it, you know, I just knew it was going to be a challenge. And it was also physically, uh, be kind of, physically it was really tiring at times. Um, uh, just to have constant, like, blood on you and just, I don't know, holding things all the time, kind of like running, sweating. <laughs> it was hot as shit in that building. Um, and I, so I was, I was nervous to take it, but I never, I, you know, I know it's horror and I like have a, I've done a, a few before, but this was different. Um, this felt uh, like, this felt a lot more, there was a lot of like detective work for me to do and to, prepare my character that way, thinking about her father, thinking about this cult, um, just piecing the year that she had before. I would, I thought about that a lot, like her grieving process and her decision to become a police officer. And I, that, that sort of helped me. It was a lot to like build on. Um, and, you know, talking to Anthony, he had such a clear vision and wanted to and was such a, I don't know, you, I know you, you say you love working with actors and it does like really show, like, um, I always felt safe to, uh, be like confused if I didn't know what to do, like he would have everything laid out and no beats that I had been thinking about myself, but he's like, yeah, you've been through X, Y, and Z before this point, so, I think talking to him, knowing I would be in safe hands, somebody wanting to make a whole character 
And that having that dimension helps with the scares and helps you build the fear yourself because you're living in it. So it felt like it, it felt like a challenge in that way. It was like new, taking on a lot more than I, I had before. The only time I'd taken on this so much with character work really was in the movie I did called Honey Trap, which was completely different, did not have um the, you know, it was not a harm. So you don't have to you're you have to, <laughs> to be terrified <laughs> constantly in that, in that. Uh, yeah. Anthony, why can you tell us about your filming locations? Yeah, we were we were planning to shoot in Kentucky, and I think a big part of the movie was to find uh, an actual police station. We had done that in the first movie, and that station was tiny. We shot that in Florida. Um, but it was an actual station. I think, oh, go, cool. well, yeah, go, but going into this, we had that same, there are all these certain wish list things. It's really hard to recreate that kind of atmosphere on a set or, you know, trying to fake it. So it's challenging to be like, hey, I need a police station to shoot in. Because <laughs> it's hard to be shooting in like a whole, like an active police station. Um, so that really dictates where you're going to go. But we were really lucky to find this, police station in Kentucky and it was huge it's huge it was yeah it's terrible. massive and scared terrifying yeah in in the downtown area that's haunted it's haunted it's, yeah it's haunted but what's unique I think about police stations is I think at least from my point of view you you feel like well these are government buildings like they're all there should be a sense of consistency throughout a police station in every city town but there just isn't like you get into these stations and you almost feel like I don't know who's designing yeah. these places. There's, there seems like I, every station feels so different. Yeah. It had this station had its own personality. It was, very, it was like very uh, disturbing to be in, but also had like the beautiful like blue brick. Yeah, like, the architecture yeah. behind it. I'm like, you thought about this. Yeah, <laughs> but when you go into it, you see all these strange things that are left behind, uh -huh. and like blood on the wall in the hallway, <laughs> and you're like, okay, something happened yeah. here. Or like, like remnants of the prisoners in the cells, yes. and like there was that there was that that shelf, the thing that said pew cones. Oh my god! Yeah, because you're like, what? You're just thinking. You're like, well, also, it's where people are. They have no. They're denied. You're denied freedom. Yeah, so yeah. there's like that horrible, like overhanging, like there's there's an energy there that I just don't think. You do feel. Yeah, you do. When you're in those hallways, you definitely that that definitely crosses mm -hmm. your mind. Like, how do people? live here just the, the, yeah everything of everything about that is so that got into the film i'm sure which are for you the good ingredients to create a good horror movie say that again sorry which are for you the good ingredients to create a good horror movie the script the writers the place the monsters um i guess I mean, I feel like, I guess, I mean, you need all of the above, don't you? I think all of the yeah. above. I do you think. make me think about all of the above. Sometimes, I think that's another thing, you know, a lot of the times you're making a horror movie and everyone's just, you just know, it, oh, is this another run of the mill? Like, I'm not like, screaming, but because you loved and, and care for the genre like that, um, you maybe think a lot about all the dimensions of horror. Before. And not just like in a in a way of, oh, I only watch it if it's some like highbrow shit. Like, no, I I like to consume everything and you want to know like who is making it and if they love it. Yeah. I mean, the cast is always very important, right? Because mm -hmm. if the cast doesn't sell it, then no one will believe it. What were the main difficulties that you have met during the production of this movie? Um, oh, well, the, this one here, yeah. right? <laughs> I admit, I don't even want to hide it, yeah. <laughs> I was a fan. I wanted that <laughs> reputation. That's no, um, <laughs> I mean, for, I'm sure for her. I mean, hard for me. It's like it was very ambitious. It was an ambitious script for the schedule we had. Mm. Oh, schedule! And I didn't want to let up. I feel like with this movie, it wasn't. I didn't want to compromise very much. So we kind of just put our head down. Like there's always like you know and when you do that there's like there's like a scene in the movie that we literally shot we broke up in four sequences yeah. like a war sequence oh yeah because you know 
I didn't want to cut it. So it's always like, let's just go back and shoot more. Let's just go back and shoot more. It was a very ambitious schedule. And she's on camera like 98% of the time. And we did try and do things in like a decent order, like, you know, story-wise, but you're shooting things out of order. Yeah. And then towards the end, that gets harder because you have continuity of the way I look. Like how distressed am I? How much blood is on me? So that though all those moments of just like making something and having to go off, do this, change this, move around here, we're shifting the crew up here. And then at the same time, maintaining a level of, oh, I have to be in it because we just have to go. That, you know, with that last week definitely was like a Ugh, yeah, yeah. Go. we gotta birth the birth the baby. Birth the baby. <laughs> so which are your current projects? Well, my current projects? Yeah. Oh man, I I'm just I'm just chilling. <laughs> totally okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I, this was the long production for me. I think. Um, yeah, you I, we the movie was coming out so close to our wrap that I haven't had time to think about much besides writing. You know, I'm I'm writing some stuff with my my wife Natalie that we're taking up, but. We oh, okay. we you're literally married. yeah uh, oh, you're married oh sorry <laughs> the, <laughs> no it's <come. laughs> great <laughs> you gave me all our time to see my wife it's like oh my wife uh, I know um we just finished the movie like yesterday technically <laughs> so, oh, we did I mean technically yeah. yeah. yes thank you so much have a good day bye bye yeah with all the QC.